So in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and taking a first look, first impressions at Audio Cube's cable. So this is a really a downgraded Thinker i35, which was and still is one of my favorite Chinese laptops. And why it is, is because it has a fully laminated Surface Book screen in it. So it's that 13.5 3 by 2 aspect ratio screen with a resolution of 300 times 200. Now in this particular model here, I'm not 100% sure if it supports the Intrig stylus and even if it has touch because it doesn't actually say when you look at the press material anywhere about touch support only that it has this screen in it. So it looks like Cube, Audio Cube has taken the Thinker, they've put the older generation, the Core M3 6Y30 in here instead of the 7Y30. They've given it the same 8 gigabytes of RAM, but they've doubled this, the storage in this to compensate. So it's gone from 256 gigabytes of storage up to now 512. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the changes if the keyboard has been improved, if there are any further changes. It still has the same wireless AC. So let's take a look at it. All right, so looking at what we get in the box here, the laptop obviously. I'll take a look at that in just a second. So we have a charger right here. So this one is rated to uh, 12 volts. 3 amps, okay, and it even says Thinker on the side of it. So it's the exact same white charger, DC in charging cable plug that it has there, exactly like the Thinker i35. We'll take a look at the weight. I don't imagine that this would have changed much from the original model. So 1.6 kilos for a 13.5 inch laptop. As you can say, a little bit heavy, but it does have this all alloy build to it. So the top of the lid, it has a little bit of flex there, you can see that they've got the Audio Cube logo on here, so that's one of the changes. But I imagine the keyboard here and the touchpad will be exactly the same as the first model. So that screen goes right back, so no changes there. It lies flat about 180 degrees, almost 180 degrees there. And no, the same touchpad here and the keyboard is exactly the same as my other model that I had with the original model. So there is no shortcut here, you will notice for the screen brightness. You have to go through the settings here on Windows and you touch the screen to control that. If of course the supports touch, which I'll find out in just a second. So this keyboard has the same key travel. It's re reasonably shallow actually. So it's not a huge amount and it feels okay. In fact, maybe a little bit of an improvement here over at least the model that I recently sold of the Thinker i35. So for ports, on the right hand side we've got a USB 3 port here, then a 3.5mm headphone jack with microphone support. And then on the left we've got a USB 3 port, DC in for charging, and then our Type-C port which supports data, power, and video out. So this hasn't changed from the original model. So first up I've gone straight into the BIOS and I can confirm that the screen is, it looks to be exactly the same as the first model. So fully laminated which is great, and this really is a top tier panel that they have in this particular model and that's what made the Thinker so special. BIOS is fully unlocked so this is great. Now if you go into this overclocking performance menu you can't actually overclock these CPUs but if you enable this uh, which I just did before then you've got access to this. Okay so the processor if you undervolt with Intel's XTU you can later go back and make those settings once you've confirmed they're stable you're not getting any blue screens of death Windows is not freezing up on you, you can actually then enter in those values and permanently, you could say, undervolt it to help boost the battery life and the performance and even improve on thermals a little bit. It's something that I do with all of my uh, Core M3s, fanless models there, and it's good to have this option because a lot of the time you don't actually see that. So everything there is available to us and be very careful with some of these advanced settings uh, because you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. Now you can see Thunderbolt is mentioned there, but this does not have Thunderbolt 3 on it at all, or any Thunderbolt, okay? It's just that the setting is there in the BIOS. So let's skip this now and boot into Windows. All right, but before I do that, I just wanted to point this out, that you can also increase the power limits here, but first we need to confirm the thermals are actually good and going to be able to take an increased power limit. By default, it's set to 4.5 watts TDP, but you can also set this to the uh, config TDP up level, which will then make it 7 and 15. Okay, so I was dreading this, but this display does not seem to support touch at all. It even states it in Windows, no pen and touch support. This is a real shame. So they have completely crippled 
this new model here. Now I have tested out, and I'm testing it right now as you can see, the Type-C port. So Type-C to Type-C, that is working. This is with my VinPot split, which is a matte touch screen. And you can see that is working. So it's good to see that it didn't cripple the Type-C port. It will also uh, accept power delivery charging. So you can charge it via the Type-C, but of course not included in the box. But what a shame, this is just crippling this screen. This is an amazing screen with touch, fully laminated, but they decided, hey, let's pull the touch support. I don't know why they did that. So this screen was originally in the Surface Book from Microsoft, quite an expensive premium device back in its day, and it still is an amazing screen as mentioned. So we'll take a look now just at Windows. So it comes with Windows 10 Home. It's our version 18.09, so yes, you will need to run a few updates to get that completely up to date with the latest versions there. Free available space on the 512 gigabyte drive that we have in there is 454 gigabytes. All right, so the SSD that's in there is a hood disk. Never heard of this brand before. 512 gigabytes as mentioned, it's SATA 3 of course, and the speeds there are a little bit slower than I would have expected for a 512 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD, as you can see right there. I mean, it's still fine for what it is. And you can see right here that the wireless is the very, very super, super common dual band wireless AC 3165, which isn't a bad chipset. It's just not super quick, that's all. You're gonna get about, in theory, about 400 megabits per second maximum out of that particular card there. And you can see that we do have the dual core, the Core M3, the 6Y30, so it's two cores, four threads. And I have done some quick benchmarks here of it. So this is Geekbench 4 score. So you can see there's nothing amazing performance-wise. Now for light computing, light tasks, office work, docs, things like that, this is gonna be just fine. But do remember, however, that the older 6Y30 doesn't have the native 10-bit HEVC decoding for video, so it will be very choppy. Uh, and that also goes for VP9 codecs, but older 4K footage and H.264 will be fine with this. OpenCL score there from the GPU as well. Taking a peek at the internals, so the SSD here is a 2280 in size, so that is good, but it should be a little bit faster than what I benchmarked. This is one of two counterweights we have in here, the touch panel and just off camera, you can see right here, our battery pack which is 38 watt hours, which is only gonna last with this screen about four to four and a half hours. So the battery life is not amazing on this particular model and it wasn't either with the Thinker i35. So what you're looking at right here, this is our Intel 3165 wireless chipset with the dual antennas that do go up into the lid of this. They're probably placed on the back of the lid. Wireless reception seems to be fine. I'm not having any problems with that. Now I have been digging around here to try and find what exactly, why really, we don't have the touch support on this. You can see that the ribbon connector here that goes up to that surface screen, it does actually state as well and looks exactly the same as the Thinker i35 from what I can remember, touch panel and LCD. So maybe there's some hardware on the panel itself that is missing because I do believe that the glass they are using does include the digitizer panel in there. It's a one glass solution with the touch in there but maybe it's just somewhere else that I can't see where it's missing. We're missing some hardware there for touch, or they simply just have it disabled in the BIOS, but I've looked around and I can't find anywhere where I could enable touch support. Overall, I think the build quality is quite good. Everything is screwed in place, so battery screwed in place. The plugs right here are taped, so they're not gonna come out. Now they could have put a bit of tape on top of those connectors there, for the wireless car, but normally they don't pop out, so we're fine there. Now, if you do plan to buy one of these and you don't mind missing the touchscreen support and you wanna get better thermals out of it, there's one easy, very easy thing you can do, and that is simply to apply a one millimeter thick thermal pad right here. That's right above that core M3 6Y30, and that would then transfer heat over to the back of this copper film they have on the back. So all of that heat will then transfer over to this, and you'll end up reducing probably the maximum temperatures by a good 10 to 15 degrees. It really is quite good. Now I do happen to have a copper, copper heatsink mod for this particular model. Well, the Thinker i35. So check my channel for that. So I have been stressing out the system here a little in the time that I've been using it. 
and the thermals seem to be okay, even running things like Cinebench R15, it's getting up to almost 80 degrees Celsius. It will get a little bit warm on the bottom, but so far it doesn't actually look like it would need a copper heatsink mod or to put a thermal pad on there, probably if you increase, of course, the power limit. So if you do up the power limit and under volt and things like that, then you probably will then need to put a thermal pad there on the back just to help improve things. But so far, thermals are okay for a fanless notebook. Linux support, everything is working. I can confirm that. This is Linux Mint, the latest build, and the touchscreen doesn't work either with this. It seems to be hardware that is missing or perhaps in the BIOS somewhere it's disabled. So I've done a bit of typing on the keyboard now and use the touchpad. Touchpad is fine, accuracy seems to be okay, it is using Windows Precision Drivers. And overall this keyboard is decent, it's fine, but it's still not a patch, I think, on the Chewy's AeroBook keyboard or the Lapbook SE keyboard. They're pretty much the same exact keyboard there. And this one is backlit too, it's just got the bigger keys more travel and overall just a more pleasant ex typing experience using this one right here. Although as you can see pressing down there is a little bit more bounce pressing on those keys. And if I just go back now, pan back to the Aldo Cubes K-Book keyboard, pressing down here you can see is a lot firmer. That's because it does have a metal backing plate behind it. Well both of them do, but this one having the alloy palm rest I think just makes it a little bit more solid but overall it is a good keyboard and to me they have improved it from at least the first batch from the Thinker i35 days. Okay so where to start this is such a disappointing release in fact this year has been very disappointing I know Intel's not helping these manufacturers but they're not helping themselves this is clearly a case of one step forward two steps back we get double the storage but I was really hoping that all that really changed was the CPU, but no, they decided that, hey, let's use touch screens that aren't touch screens. They're not actually working. So maybe they're just using their seconds. Maybe they're using used parts from the i35 and they're just putting it all together, creating this new laptop. But don't get me wrong. I mean, this is a nice laptop. I mean, it does have an amazing screen. This is a brilliant top panel that this has in it, which really does make this particular laptop. The keyboard's fine, the touchpad is good, but it's not the best possible keyboard you will get out there. And in terms of battery life, not great, okay? Because of the screen, it's very draining, and the Core M3s, they never have good battery life. Now you can undervolt a little bit. I've managed to get about negative 0.065, which has been stable for me, but you're still gonna get only around four to four and a half hours, which is really disappointing, that falls short. But I mean, what are they doing Aldo Cube? They really should have brought, I feel with this, they could have given us a complete new model. Put an 8th gen Core M3 in this, a backlit, tweaked, revised keyboard, and keep the rest of it the same. And I think most people would have been happy with that, and even a little bit more expensive, of course, because of that CPU. And I think it would have sold well for them, and they probably would end up going somewhere in 2019. But if they continue to release this rehashed older tech as a new model, then I don't see them having a very bright future out there, well, just like a lot of the other manufacturers. So sadly, this one's disappointing. If you can still find the Thinker i35, which is the original model of this, with, of course, the touchscreen, the faster Core M3. 7Y30 and well 256 gigabytes of storage still fine you can upgrade it of course and that is the model to get and thank you so much for watching this first impressions hands-on and the only video that I will be posting on the cable care from Aldo Cube.